Again. Again. Oh, happy Friday, everyone. It's almost the weekend. I can tell because Kat's liver hung up its do not disturb sign. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I would stop, yeah, but I lied. You can't. I can't. <laughs> so is it time to declare this national experiment over? The one where we handed America over to a guy who gets lost on the way from the toilet to the sink? <laughs> There's not a single optimistic photo of Joe Biden that we can find. It's all like he's got a migraine. And so do we. Let's assess the mess. Right now, we see plunging enrollment in public schools, even the ones where hot teachers bang the male students. Wow. People are leaving the hellish prisons faster than felons leaving actual prisons in California. Gas is climbing to 10 bucks a gallon. They're talking about rationing. If Biden were any farther back into the 1970s, he'd be peeing down the leg of his bell bottoms. <laughs> The only formula for babies that the Dems can find is abortion. Oh. Yeah, huh? Pretty, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Which is a shame because now even men can get pregnant. What do you say a woman is? I believe that everyone can identify for themselves. Okay. Um, do, do you believe then that men can become pregnant and have abortions? Yes. <laughs> She's nuts! Look at he's got crazy, crazy eyes. Well, that's gonna ruin the NFL. <laughs> Sorry, Tom Brady's day to day with morning sickness. <laughs> so as our education system implodes, teachers are sent to sex fetish conferences. I could just see a math teacher teaching kids how to count to 20 while he sucks on his life partner's toes to do so. It's real. <laughs> this as kids experience the highest rates of mental illness on record, only to be taught by their teachers. Funny how being masked and locked down will do that to a young person. Just ask the Jehovah Witness tied up in my basement. <laughs> Meanwhile, panic Dems demand investigations into domestic terror as their disinformation board implodes faster than a Chris Wallace talk show. <laughs> as this goes on, Netflix scraps all its woke programming. The world's richest man, once a diehard Democrat, now says he's voting Republican. Yeah. Hell, yeah. hell, at this point, George Soros must be having second thoughts. <laughs> Interestingly, the public seems immune to the Democrats jitting up anti-Republican rage. And poor Antifa. Fuel prices are so high, instead of Molotov cocktails, rioters have to throw Shirley Temples. <laughs> So what's going on here? Are we realizing this ain't right anymore? Are we waking up? And is this the true definition of being woke? Makes sense. We let the lunatics take over the asylum and now the streets look like mental hospitals, minus the indoor plumbing. Smash and grabs continue unabated. Drug stores shut down as the street drug trade ramps up. That includes fentanyl and the Pepsi they stole from Walgreens. I'm surprised they're not honoring coupons. <laughs> Gang crime turns sections of major cities into no-go territories, and the street poopers, they go anywhere they want to go. This ask Salou. Oh. <laughs> and our government, well, they believe the answer is investigating you, with the FBI meaning full-blown idiots. Are you a school board terrorist or a pronoun abuser? Did you dare ask why that blue-haired teacher had the communist manifesto in one hand and a sex toy in the other? And what do either of those have to do with third grade math? And they claim we all follow the replacement theory, but only the left seems to know what that is. And why? Well, they wanted the votes, but they also want cheap labor, just like they did back in the 1850s. A lot of other states are heading toward increasing diversification, toward demographic changes that mean uh, a, a less red state future for them. I really think because of demographic changes in this country, I think that the Democratic Party is going to win Texas moving forward, and the Democratic Party is going to be in power for the next 30, 40 years. Texas have had on this sort of long-term project of, of trying to take uh, some red states across the Sun Belt and flip them blue as demographic changes are taking place there. And the demographic change that's happening in America right now gives the upper hand to Democrats. So, assuming one group thinks a certain way, what a bunch of racists. 
Anyway, I list all this stuff because something's happening. I call it the great awakening. The public's waking up because unlike the media, you exist in the real world. You make a living in the real world and face challenges every day in the real world. So when the public looks at a problem, it's with a mental dashboard and we see the red engine light flashing. It tells us that more criminals and fewer cops equal a crime wave. That math's so simple, only a socialist could f*** it up. <laughs> We see the wokeism, the indoctrination, the moves, against free, uh, the moves against free speech. We can see it because we have the tools to see it. The Dems can't see it because they have only one filter, and of course, that's race. So when crime goes up, they blame racism. Kids get lousy educations, they blame racism. When a billionaire buys Twitter, hell, he must be racist. When their bread goes stale, racism. When they get a flat, racism. How did this happen? Well, when you decide that patriotism is oppression, you got to replace it with something. And that's identity politics. That's their replacement theory. But it's like trying to replace sugar with sweet and low. The people who love sugar can tell how horrible it is right away. But if your country can't be forgiven based on the original sin of slavery, then you can't be patriotic. You can't love this country. All you can do is destroy it. And it's much easier to burn buildings than it is to make them. We see this clearly now. In America, we understand our faults, our blessings, our need for cooperation, unity, and love. We understand that identity politics offers none of that. If you don't believe that, look at our competitors' ratings. That's called empirical evidence. <laughs> Thankfully, we're in this together, and we're going to pull this country out of this malaise like a fireman or cop pulls a drowning dog out of a frozen lake. And we'll do it whether the idiot in charge likes it or not. With his popularity so low and gas prices so high, I wonder what he thinks. All right, all right, look. look. So gas prices are up, my popularity's down. I, I don't care. I don't even care anymore. I, who cares who likes me? It doesn't matter. Uh, my wife likes me. She's a doctor. And besides, I got a friend, Lady Gaga. She told me when she was in high school, nobody liked her. And, uh, you know, they made fun of her. And now she's Lady Gaga. So I'll, I'll be like her. I'll have my moment. I'm on the edge of glory. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guests. Like a Lego figurine, you'll immediately forget his face in just a few minutes. Fox News contributor Tom Shalou. <laughs> She's so bright, you'll see spots when she leaves. Fox News contributor and townhall.com editor, Katie Pavlich. He's the biggest name from McCungie, Pennsylvania, because he's the only name from McCungie, Pennsylvania. TV writer and producer, Adam Yenzer. And like your carry-on luggage, she's got a tough exterior, but fits in most overhead storage bins. <laughs> Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. Tom, how you doing? Doing great, Greg. I love the new studio. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing hasn't changed, Greg. We get water, you get water, and a lifesaver. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. I guess, I guess this is what success tastes like, <laughs> Tom. One day you will taste it as well, but only if you stick by me. That's right. If you ever stray, you're dead to me and I will ruin your career. <laughs> Don't, yeah. Just like I did to that Conan guy. <laughs> <laughs> or the guy that was his partner. Remember that tall weirdo? Good guy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, you're friends, I, I guess. Know, I mean. I don't know. You know what? Shut up. <laughs> so everything, Tom, everything the media thought would happen under Trump is actually happening under Biden. Yes. Like I, it, and it's all happening, oddly, at once. It feels like a great unraveling. I know, and that's the funny thing, is that it's all going wrong, and this is when they decide to have the kink conference? Yes. <laughs> and invite teachers? It's so weird. I don't even know any of that stuff that they're doing. Mm -hmm. But that, the whole thing is, the thing that's so bad about it is they're, they've made it normal. Like, mm -hmm. now that they have uh, teachers... Mm -hmm. And they're teaching this stuff in school. Mm -hmm. It's taken the whole mystery of years ago. Like if you were a CEO or a high-end bond trader, 
you know, you'd hire a woman to put on heels and step on your back or whatever they do, right? Uh -huh. Whatever they do. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know. But now what do heels, they do? Heels, you say? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Now what are they going to do? It's like if they, once they make it normal, then the CEO is going to have to do something even crazier. No, I disagree. The kinkier it gets, the more mundane <laughs> your extremes will become. Uh. Like you will actually pay women to cook you a pot roast. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that conference was for the people who were presenting at the conference. Yes. Because yeah. I read about it, and it was like they talked about their fetishes, and some of them involved this, and that. It's like, that's only for the people who want to talk about that stuff. That's not educational for anybody. Yeah, so what, yeah, what we're talking about, there was this Philadelphia uh, sex conference for teachers who teach kids, and, like, all the stuff was all this kinky crap. And it, it was like, I was thinking about that. It's like, this is what happens when you get, got rid of the sex phone lines. Right? Because <laughs> that's where you would go and talk about this crap. I don't use the phone. No, yeah, you don't. What is a phone line? I yeah, who's what a, what's you know, a phone line? Was always a room that always had lots of charges from the 900 number. Yes. And you knew yes. that something and was Of course, wrong. it was a psychic hotline. <laughs> Let's broaden this discussion beyond perversion, Katie. I don't Thank know goodness. how we got there, but with Tom here, you never know. <laughs> uh, um, do you feel as I do, do you feel as I do that like the country is kind of waking up or there's something yeah. going on? You know, it's like, I think Netflix is, because Netflix is a liberal company, the fact that they're can canning all this woke crap is amazing. Yeah, and also, <laughs> yes, very good thing. You didn't even have to say anything. They I just know. Applaud your very I'm just presence. so good at expanding to a classier conversation. <laughs> yes. That everybody just loves it. Uh, you, when you look at the polling numbers for Joe Biden, especially in the direction of the country, when 21 percent of people say the direction of the country is great, I'm like, who are these people? Yes. Like, who? Where are they living? What are they doing? They need to maybe be in charge because everything else is not working out for people. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think people are realizing that when you take a position as a company, you're alienating a number of people for mm -hmm. business purposes. They don't take the Michael Jordan stance of Republicans buy uh, Nike or shoes too, right? Yeah. And I think people are just sick of being lectured uh, about morals from people who don't hold themselves to the same standards, whether it's COVID or uh, climate change, for example. You know, John Kerry is telling us we all need to drive electric cars and not travel. Well, he has a private jet and gets to go wherever he wants for the sake of climate change. So I think everybody's just tired of being lectured to by people who think they are moral betters and they're sick of it. I think, too, it's a... <laughs> also, I think a lot of this wokeism stuff is a luxury in good times. Right. And now right. they've brought us into bad times and that <laughs> got to go. Weird thing, Adam, that I've noticed. Yeah. Uh, the mo mainstream media now covering Hunter Biden. <laughs> it seems to me that now they're even deciding that they the, Joe's the wrong horse and they got to get him out. Yeah. You know, I don't know. And, and turning on Hunter Biden's the way to do that. I think Hunter might be the one percent that still supports Joe Biden. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> when, when they do those polls. It's yes. Hunter Biden and the anchors at CNN. Yes. And that's the entire percentage that are still yes. still supporting Joe Biden. They all live in the same place. Yeah. But Hell, be, yeah, <laughs> or heaven, depending on what you're into, right, Tom? Did you learn that at the conference? <laughs> no, I was gonna say uh, they've turned now. The Hunter Biden story, I guess, is okay to report on now. Yeah, exactly. It's not for no, I, and, and I think I think what's happening is they are tr they are panicking because the Democrats see there's no way out, and I I, I mean they had. A number of opportunities. The I think they're going to count on the Roe v. Wade thing helping them out, but it, it, it isn't moving the dial at all. They're hoping, you know, any kind of thing, the racism card, anything. It was clear that they that Roe v. Wade leak was to gin people up for the election because they have nothing else going for them right now. Yeah. They have nothing else to get their base going. Even his own party's turning against him now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of exciting, Cat, isn't it? Aren't you thrilled? It takes a lot to it takes a lot to thrill me. <laughs> Tom knows his lady. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Heels. I think that the problem with Biden, it's a double-barreled shotgun of problems because he's an empty vessel, and then it and then what filled the void was wokeism. So if he was just incompetent, there might have been some moderates to take his place, but instead, he's an empty vessel, and it was replaced by something even worse, which are these, like infantile minds who want to destroy 
you know, anything that's successful. Yeah, it's just so strange what they choose to focus on, mm -hmm. right? Like, okay, less than 1% of the population is trans, mm -hmm. and even smaller percentage of that is trans men, and even smaller percentage of that is trans men, people born as women who transition to men who will get pregnant. Right. And then even <laughs> smaller of a percentage than that is those people who would give a how you talk about pregnancy. Right. It's such a small, which means it has to be about something else, which yeah. I think it's self-serving, because I think it's an easier way for them to say, look how caring and compassionate we are, mm -hmm. and how much you know, better educated and, and smarter I am than you are. Because it can't really, it mathematically doesn't make sense that it's about what they say it is. Yeah, yeah if you cannot actually, I think that they, uh, uh, they deliberately do not do a head count on this, because they wouldn't break triple figures. It's yeah. probably like 10 yeah. or 12. Really, of, 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 quote, pregnant men. Thank God they're okay. Yeah, well, which I get, you know, Whoop. all right, if someone's told me, yeah, I identify as a man and I'm pregnant, I'd say the same thing I would say anytime someone tells me they're pregnant, which is just, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just do, don't I mean, invite me to the baby shower. Yeah, please. And we're good. Congrats. You know? No. What I found you can't do, though, is just walk up to a man and congratulate him on being pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out most of the time, yeah. just uh, I, very, I, very offended. I do have to say, I'm very That's disappointed. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all very right, disappointed in all of the chest-feeding pregnant men for not making up for the baby formula yes, shortage. Yes, exactly. By, you know, chest-feeding all of the babies. I very know, sad. it's awful. All right, up next, would you stab your colleague in the back? over the face mask that they laugh. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.